Hi. So let me just get my screen ready. So Jasmine and I would like to show you some of the things that we've been playing with, looking at, finding with Moodle 4 that's recently come out. And uh, I believe at the start of the year, um, Jazz and I did give a sneak peek of what we had access to as a, a Moodle partner. And um, uh, I know this is being recorded, but back then it wasn't. And um, I think you can remember that I wasn't that impressed and I was a bit nervous. <laughs> well, can I say that now that I've seen it, it's out, I've got my hands on it so much better. And I'm really excited about it. So now I'm going to show you um, yeah, Moodle 4. Um, towards the end, I'm going to pass on to Jazz, who's going to show you some of the more technical aspects, things that you know really go over my head um you know, I'm more of a course creator teaching and learning side whereas jazz is very much more of the more technical administrator side so yeah, we make a great team so I'm just going to show you the walkthrough as um as you first log into Moodle 4 and give you a demo of some of the uh the new features the new things that I found things that I love things that I'm like why did they do that maybe you can give me an idea because you know, I don't have all the answers. And then I'll pass on to Jazz to show um, that the uh, quiz, quiz question bank um, uh, changes and the reporting that's come as part of Moodle. So logging in. Um, so when you get Moodle 4 out of the box, um, it still has Boost and Classic. Classic still looks like old classic Moodle. Boost changes. So with Boost now you have um, the ability to put your own uh, login image. So here you can see I've got a nice picture that I just took from Unsplash. And if I log in, oh, does this every time. Um, you can see now that my dashboard looks very, very different. So the timeline block that used to hide somewhere over to the side in the old Moodle is now prominent front and center uh, in the middle of your Moodle dashboard. And where are the courses? I hear you ask. Well, they've hidden them away on another tab. And, you know, a, a, as good as it is, it's good to have your courses in one area, but on your dashboard, you have your stream of information, what you need to do, including a, a wonderful new calendar that's uh, in Moodle. Um, I find <laughs> for me, a dashboard should just be one place that has everything. And so this has confused me a little, but if you wanted to, you can always put, you know, edit your dashboard and pop it on there. So. The timeline, this is wonderful. So you can see already that the icons have changed. So Moodle have updated their icons for, um, for the activities. So you see this is a forum, this is uh, a book, this is an assignment, a page, a choice. Yeah, so you can see all these and these all link to activities in the course. And these are all based, like those of you that have used the timeline before, they're based on either a deadline that's been set in the assignment, or if you've got activity completion on, you just fill out the extra little bit at the bottom of the expected completion date. And that's how you make it appear on the timeline. Likewise, uh, with the calendar, it's nice and big and very visible now. Um, it's a really good for students to sort of like you know, keep track of their learning. So if they can see they've got four assignments in on the same day, they need to get you know time scheduled to work on them. And maybe they can flag it with their lecturer saying, hey, I've got four on one day, can I get an extension on one? Or you know, wh whatever students like to do to manage their time. Where are the blocks? Where are the blocks? Well, the blocks are now hidden behind this little fly out here, this drawer. So um, the idea of Moodle 4 is to be, you know, more mobile friendly. So if I did change the screen, oh, I have no idea what's behind it. Oh, phew, it's just the picture. Oh, well, I've got something else behind it. But as you can see, as I drag it, it looks like, you know, it would work very, very well on a tablet device, you know, mobile devices. You know, if I shrink it even more, you know, it sits quite nicely like that. And, and likewise on here, um, you know, if I want to find stuff at a glance, what I need to do next, it's all listed by date. And it's like, oh, you know, I need to look at this. If I click view, it takes me straight to the activity. And if I go back to my dashboard, you can see, right, it's done. It's been taken off my list. So it's nice having a little checklist. So, yeah, so apart from why have they done that, <laughs> I'm really quite happy with the dashboard. Right, so I'm now going to go into a course. So I have a demo course set up. It's um, it's called my Sandpit. So it's where I go in and play with all the new features. All right, so again, the courses. You can see straight away that they've got um, collapsed topics now as part of core. So um, those of you that have the collapsed topics plugin, they've, re they've realized, okay, Moodle pages are long sometimes. We need a way of being able to constantine them up. And um, yes, that's exactly what they've done. What you can also see is that these 
activities are now sort of sat in cards. OK, so if I show you here, so this is a URL. I have my um, description, I have my link, I have my what I need to do with it and then you know the instructions. So it all sits quite nice in a card. But what it does do is make your page really, 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 really long. And this is just a dummy course. It's not, you know, your normal 12 week or one year course. So what Moodle's done to help make things easier to find is they've got this wonderful course index. And as you can see, me with my teacher's hat in, I've got my restricted content so I can see it there. Student obviously won't see it unless they've unlocked it. But I've also got my activity completion down the side so I can actually go in and see all right, what have I got left to do and it can track what I've done. So, for example, here, I just need to look at this link. I've looked at it. Let's go back and I can see it should go green, you know, likewise here. I can click on it. Oh, go back. That's sales not doing that. Right. OK. And so you can see that it's all been um, activated so I can follow along. What I also like about this is those of you, and I might hear a cheer from all the way up in Scotland, um, what used to drive me nuts is having to move content around, you know, with the drag and drop. It used to, you know, you accidentally drop it somewhere and you can't find it, you've got to look for it. But this made it really, really simple now. So you can just use the crosshairs here and just move content here. So nice and easy, you know, it's not too much scrolling. So I quite like that as well. So yes, this menu flies in and flies out. And you can use it for tracking if I turn anything off. What this is also useful for is um, so something that Jasmine and I have found really, really tricky when we've been getting to grips with Moodle 4 is um, trying to get back to the course homepage. So, for example, I'm in a forum. OK, and I want to get back. It's like, where's my breadcrumb trail gone? It's like, oh, it's up there. Tiny, tiny link. How do I get back to the course? Well, the way Moodle feels like it's trying to, the, the navigation it's trying to force people through is to use these side panels anyway. So you can look for the content here and you move through the content down the side. <coughs> okay. So that's one thing I'm kind of like not too sure about because I like having instructions and stuff on the course, but some people might design their materials in a different way. Something else as well, so you notice, you know, where's the admin block? Where's the admin block? I can't see an admin block. Well, they've put it all across the top now. OK, so your settings, your participants, grades, reports and other things that are dropped down. Um, something which has been frustrating for me and um, Jasmine's heard me <laughs> do this. So if I'm here and, um, you know, I've done an activity here and I'm, you know, oh, I need to add a participant. And I go back, oh, how do I get back? I go back and then it's like, I've got to scroll all the way up to the top to get back to my participants list or to look at grades or stuff. So I'm used to having it here down the side, you know? So that's one thing that I've noticed that, you know, I'm gonna to have to learn to live with unless, you know, we build a theme that has, you know, my links there, which is what we're doing. But <clears throat> anyway, and the other thing that is in, um, in the settings is um, this course reuse thing. So part of my testing, so when I'm developing content for people, is um, I like to reset course completion so I can go through and do the tracking. I couldn't for the life of me work it out. And then it's like, mm, what's behind you know, this door here? And then I came to this, I was like, oh, that's not what I want. And then I saw this drop down here. I don't know if you can see it, but this is where all that stuff is. OK, so if you're thinking, how do I reset my course? It's here. <laughs> it's in this little drop down here. So I've told you now, so you, you, you know, you can always try and remember it. OK, and then other things to look, look at. So visually, it is very different again. So you've got blocks on this side. You've got your um, course index at the side. Your edit button is nice and tidy up at the top to flick between the two. Uh, again, you can notice that the, um, the course cards have changed. Um, and uh, just to show you um, like what they look like when you go and add them, so add an activity. And what they've tried to do is group, like color code them and group them together. So if you see something that's pink, that tends to be more of an assessment tool. If you see something that's green, it's more about communication, thinking um, type of tool. And then anything that's um, orange, they're your communication and collaboration type tools, which is great until you start plugging in plugins that don't fit that formula and they stick out like a sore thumb. But, you know, it's, it's a really, you know, it's a good start. It's nice. And just to point out, Big Blue Button is now part of Moodle 4. Um, I have one set up here. It's, it's, it's nice. It does the job. It's only the free trial. You don't have to have it on at all. So when you get your Moodle 4, 
or 4.1, you can go in and just hide it like you would do any other plugin um, in Moodle. Um, so default out of the box, it's switched off. So if you want to switch it on, you have to go and actively do it, which I think is the right way. But anyway, it's here. It's great. Um, you know, we use Big Blue Button internally for all of our um, sessions. So, you know, it's quite good to see it in Moodle. Some of the new things I really, really like. So if I switch to student role, hopefully I've got access to it. Here we go. No, I don't. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, is it student? No, it's moved. Bear with me. Bear with. Bear with. So in the assignments, see, scroll, scroll, scroll. It's a root. I should just use this, shouldn't I? Here we go. Assignments. Simple grading. There's this new feature now. So if I go to edit settings, there's this new feature in assignments where you can add your activity instructions. Now this I love because you know I used to put you know. I used to love using the description to sort of tell my students what I want them to do. But then if I wanted to display that on the, you know, in the course page, it would, it would just be massive. But now I can keep my description nice and short. And I could put my instructions here. So now that if I look at this page as a student, <coughs> please let me, please let me. There you go. And I go to, you know, so I can see all my information, my open due date, um, where I am, I click add submission. I've got my assignment instructions here. So it's really, really nice to have it um, all in one place. Um, obviously, if I have a, a document to download, that will be here as well. But I quite like it. Other new things to point out before I hand over to Jasmine is um, you have this wonderful button. So um are here send contents change notification so if uh, for example the assignment is set the students already logged in they may have looked at the dates and all the information but oh i've made a mistake i've put the wrong dates in i can go in make the changes tick the bot bot button and then if i press save and a message gets sent out to all enrolled users to say this activity information has changed please go and check so students have no excuse that they didn't know that the dates have changed anyway right so I think that's me just from like the overall look and feel of it. Um, I am now going to stop sharing and hand over to my esteemed colleague, Jasmine. Thank you, Sam. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yeah. So I had was tasked with looking at the, the Moodle quiz improvements. And at first, when I knew they were doing a lot of work in the Moodle quiz, I was sort of hoping for some improvements around setting marking and blind marking and stuff. And then it was at the question bank that was improved. And I'm saying, OK, let's see what it's all about. And it really is. It's amazing. It's really fantastic what they've improved on. So the improvements around the actual question bank are powered by a set of plugins that are only available to the administrators to configure. But once they're configured, they can give lots of options to teachers to sort of allow for collaboration around middle quiz questions. So I know that I've worked with teachers before. And the management of quiz questions has had to happen outside of Moodle. So if you think about, um, you know, status of questions, you know, drafting questions for exams, other teachers have to review and agree to, you know, perhaps even have to be verified, um, you know, commenting to each other, you know, around these questions. Um, that all happens within the Moodle question bank now. So you can get into the question bank two ways. So you can come into the actual quiz and access the question bank or from the top of the course at the tabbed um, areas, you can access the question bank from there too. So we're in the question bank now. So I'll just show you this quickly, but we can talk more around it in the breakout room. So you can see here there's questions. So the status column allows the question to be sitting at draft or ready to use. You've got a version here, which I like, and you've got a comments column as well. So I can see there's a comment there. And if I click on that and have a look, there's a question here about being three types of nerves in the body. 
and just maybe a sort of challenging question saying, are you sure that there are only three types or maybe more? So it just allows that area, you know, for the teachers to collaborate and manage um, their Moodle quiz creations where there is a lot of online exams going on at the moment. Okay, so that is the quiz question bank improvements which i think are great so something else i'll show is the custom report builder so the new report builder in moodle 4 is related to the custom report builder that's in moodle workplace so the part the custom report builder that's in core for moodle is a great first step towards being able to create you know customize reports that you can schedule and share with particular people within Moodle 4. The, the administrator has to create the reports and she does this from the site admin area. So it's under reports and custom reports. Now, if I just edit this, and again, we can look into this more in the breakout room. The report content is built from report sources. So you're provided with three different report sources with, as core. So it's users, cohorts, and courses. Now, if you want to report from any other source, you probably need a bit of developer's help, Moodle developers or someone with SQL skills to, to build you that source and connect in to your custom report builder. But all the scopes there to do that. So if I preview this really simple report that I've done using the sources that are available in Moodle 4 core. So this is just users last access date. So it's a list of the students or username email address and the last date they accessed the Moodle site. So that's just an example of a very um, simple report that you can do. But yeah, we can look at it more when we're in the breakout room. So I'm just aware of the time. So that's probably that's probably us, Kenji. I was just wanting to go over those two things.